Hi friends. So now that we have understood what are elements, compounds, how various elements are combined in a fixed definite ratio to form a compound, whereas the formation of these compounds are governed by laws of chemical combinations, which helps us in understanding the basics of how the chemical reactions take place, how much amount of the product is formed, and many such related questions during the chemical combinations. Like in the first law of chemical combination, that is the law of conservation of mass, Antoni Lavoisier stated that the mass is neither created nor destroyed in the chemical reaction. Whereas in the second law of chemical combination, that is the law of definite proportion, Joseph L. Proust wonderfully explains that in any chemical substance, the element is always present in a fixed definite proportion by mass. And this part is what we have clearly understood in our previous sessions. However, these laws still need some proper explanation and experimental evidence. And that is why in 1808, an English chemist, John Dalton, proposed a theory which is known as Dalton's Atomic Theory. This theory helps us in understanding the concept regarding matter, composition of matter, atoms, and even the combination of atoms. And that is why, friends, it is much important for us to understand this theory. So let's start at today's session on Dalton's Atomic Theory. Guys, this whole Dalton's Atomic Theory is divided into five major postulates. So let's understand each postulate one by one. In our first postulate, he explains that all the matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. It means if we keep on dividing a matter into a smaller and smaller section, what we'll get in the end is an atom. So let's suppose we have this piece of coal with us, which is nothing but carbon. And if we keep on dividing this piece of coal into a smaller and smaller section, so what we'll get in the end, which we can't further divide, is an atom of carbon. That means this piece of coal is made up of millions of atoms of carbon. Guys, this is the very first time the whole world came to know that all the matters are made up of tiny particles called atoms. And that is why it is one of the important postulate of Dalton's atomic theory. And now if you see the second postulate of this theory, then in the second postulate, he explains that atom is indivisible. That means it can't be created or destroyed in the chemical reaction. So atom is like the fundamental units, dividing them further is not possible. Also, two or more than two atoms may combine to form a new unit. However, no new atom will be created or the existing one will be destroyed. Let's take an example and understand it. Suppose any element A reacts with any element B to form a compound C. Friends, according to second postulate, no new atom will be formed during the formation of compound C because this compound C is formed by the combination of atoms of A and B. That means during this chemical reaction, no new atom is formed, whereas the existing one is also not destroyed. That is, if five atoms of element A reacts with 5 atom of element B, it will form 5 different units of compound C. And now in this, if you see, the number of atoms before the reaction is equal to the number of atoms present after the reaction. That means 5 atoms of A is present initially also and the 5 atoms of A is also present after the reaction. Therefore, this postulate has a very key role in explaining that how different atoms are combined to form compounds. And now, if we move to the third postulate of this theory, then John Dalton in third postulate explains that atoms of a similar elements are identical in their mass and chemical properties. So this actually means that if we zoom into this piece of sodium, then we can clearly notice here all the atoms which makes up this element sodium are just the same. But the question is, in what sense they are same? Well friends, they are same in terms of their shape size, mass, and also in terms of their chemical properties. So in short, we can say that according to third postulate, atoms of a similar elements have similar chemical and physical properties. And also associated to this third postulate, we have our fourth postulate, in which John Dalton explains that atoms from the different elements have different masses and chemical properties. So if you see the atom of sodium with the atom of calcium, then in both of these atoms, you can clearly notice the difference in their size and also in their masses. Now the question is, how do we calculate the mass of an atom and also the size of an atom? So friends, for this we have a separate video. But the important point here is, 
two different elements have atoms in them but the atoms from different elements have difference in their mass and chemical properties so according to third and fourth postulate we can easily correlate the properties of atoms from the same element and also the properties of atoms from the different elements so now let's move to a last postulate that is the fifth postulate of dalton's atomic theory in this fifth postulate john dalton explains that atom combines to a ratio of a small whole numbers to form a compound so let's try to understand it with the help of an example let's suppose one atom of element a reacts with two atom of element b to form one unit of compound c in this case if you see that in a unit of compound c we have one atom of a and two atoms of element b so this one and two are the whole number and that is why according to fifth postulate this justified that the atoms are always mixed in a ratio of whole numbers you will not find half atom or 3 by 4th atom of any element combines with the elements of other atom to form a compound like if we see the formation of water then in this case two atoms of hydrogen reacts with one atom of oxygen to form one unit of water here also 2 and 1 are the whole numbers so this is how fifth postulate explain the combination of different atoms in terms of simple whole number ratio so in the nutshell all these postulate help chemists to understand the behavior of elements and compounds formed from them but understanding these elements and compound knowing the concept of atom is very necessary so let's get to know what exactly these atoms are how they exist their masses and many such interesting concepts in the coming videos by then stay tuned and keep learning postulates of dalton's atomic theory all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms atoms are individual particles that can't be created or destroyed in the chemical reaction atoms of a given element are identical in mass and chemical properties atoms of different elements have different masses and chemical properties atoms combine in a ratio of small whole numbers to form compounds